all right so literally all you have to do is look so let's say i have this part right here right an r6 part let's call uh -huh. this guy um enemy right and i want a hitbox uh -huh. to get something that's in front of him right like this right right yes. here right so let's say i have like a tree or something right or like this thing called wood part of this cart here and i call this part wood right and i make this part uh i don't even know like that right that's so not now, wood is, is it wood now are you happy are you happy yes okay nice so yes yeah, so i need this part wood right i anchor this part right all you have to do is here first identify the guy so local local our player workspace dot uh what is it enemy right and then we can do we have to identify, identify the humanoid root part so local r humanoid root part because our player find first out humanoid root part right mm -hmm. cool so now what we do is we do local overlap params equals overlap params on you you can probably like add like white white lists and stuff but like i don't know how to do that yet so we just we just leave it like that right and now now we do local um hit contents or whatever you want to name it. it's like this is going to return like a list of every part that is touching the area your hitbox right so look at hit uh -huh. contents so local hit contents equals and now we do this workspace uh get parts in bound in bounds in box right this is the new it's a new function i think it was added last year of november i didn't even know about it so yeah you do workspace get parts bound get parts bounds in box right and then here you return the c frame of where you want that hitbox to be so i want it to be let's take a, let's take a part right and then that part is what let's name that let's size that part one 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 so now we can measure exactly in studs so the human root part is going to be right here right you want it to be at least one like so one two three right right three um studs in front of it right and then for the size we want it to be like this let's say we want it to be like um what's the size we want it to be uh six studs tall uh you want it to be five studs wide and then um uh three studs long okay that's our hitbox it's gonna look exactly like this let me make it clear so you, uh -huh. you can understand so it's gonna be exactly like this right uh, force yep. field, force field, force field, not force field. Oh uh, yeah, force field. So yeah, that's the, gonna be our hitbox. Let's actually make it four studs wide, or four studs wide, like that, something like that, right? And in this case, it would be, if if this right here would be the the original position, right? Or maybe like maybe something like uh -huh. this, right? You move it up, basically half of the of the um the part, and then you add one more. So I guess you can just move it like, you can just move it like um. Uh, what's the size for? We can just move it like four studs in front of the player, okay? Uh huh. So now we do this. So we do C frame equals C frame. Oh uh, no, wait, no, C. So this, no, no, no. We pass the C frame. So we're gonna do, we're gonna pass C frame, or no, our humanoid root part dot C frame times C frame dot new. This is so clutch, bro. Zero, zero. And then we do, um, I guess our player, I don't know, zero, zero. And then we do, um, negative. Cause that's four, right? So negative, I guess four. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think it's okay. So if it was right here, right, this would be the exact part. If we were to move it four times, one, two, three, four. So now we one more, five, six. So six would be good, I guess. No, seven. I want to be exactly right. So seven right there. Okay. So we're gonna minus seven, right? Uh huh. And then for the size, we're gonna do vector three dot new, and then we're gonna do what was it? I forgot the size. Is it was uh five studs five studs wide six studs tall so five studs wide six studs tall and then four studs long right and then we just pass the um the overlap parameters which we don't have anything in there right now so we do overlap params right right here boom and now this is gonna this whole line this one line is gonna return every part that is touching touching uh our our presumed hitbox okay so it's gonna query. Uh -huh. It's gonna query every part that's touching that and return it in the table. So now if we do print hit contents, and then we run the code, right? It should print out a list of everything. See, look, it prints out a list of every part that is touching it. That includes this part and even the base plate. So look, if I click the bottom right here, it only prints the base plate. That is interesting. Mm. You did it wrong. Maybe I did do it wrong. Um, I'm, I'm maybe to move it up. I think it might not even be up. As much as it needs to. Maybe it's too far it's, up. It's today's senior dress-up day or something, bro. 
Shredders. See, okay, so yeah, so I moved all it. The, all the senior dressed in like robes and uh, bonnets and stuff. This is like pajama day. Maybe it's pajama day. I for think me. it's pajama day for seniors. Yeah. But yeah, so the problem was that I moved it up too far. I think four steps was done. I moved it up way too far. But yeah, look. So now you can see when I'd run it, it prints out the parts that it prints out the wood and it prints out the base plate. You see? One and two. Uh huh. So yeah, that's how you get the that's how you do hitboxes. And then you can just like if you wanna um do you know how to loop through tables, Theo? No. Okay, I'm gonna show you real quick. It's so easy. Okay, so literally Hold on. Okay. Alright, continue. Hold on, let me take a screenshot of what you have. Cause I might have to go in uh like I'm gonna post oh, that no. as a video. You can just watch the video. I'm recording. Right. I was recording the entire time. Okay. So yeah. Um. So yeah. Literally looping through tables. You can just do this. You can just do um for IV in pairs, right? And then you can do like hit contents. I do right. And then you're gonna do local humanoid equals uh no local local uh character or just enemy character. So e character equals um v dot parent, right? Local e humanoid equals e character find first child humanoid right and they can just do if um e humanoid so that means that if this like the humanoid exists right then you can do, can do print this is a player so let's test it out and see if it works boom see this is a player and it printed seven times because we have one two three four five six Wait, one, two, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven is the humanoid root part. Look, here we have the humanoid root part, and then we have the actual humanoid. So that's seven parts. So yeah. Oh, look what you did, bro. You broke it. So, shut up. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Now what we can do is that we can have a, a thing above this. Okay. Call. We're gonna call it hit list. Right. Equals. And then we're gonna do this. So now what we can do is we can do um, if not hit list, and then we're gonna have e humanoid. Right. Then. We can do uh, hit list e humanoid equals true. So this is basically just saying this this line is basically just saying that um, if that if that character hasn't already been been touched or damaged, that's what it's saying. So if it's if it's been touched, right? Because you saw how we printed it seven times. We don't want it to do that. So if that character yeah. has already been touched, it's gonna add it to this list, and it's just basically saying that if that character is not already in this list, then we're gonna damage it. So once we hit one part of the character, it's gonna put inside this list right here, and then we're gonna damage that um, damage that character. So we're gonna, we're gonna damage it once. So we can do that, and then we can do hit list uh, humanoid equals true, and then we can do uh, e humanoid take damage. Let's say take damage. We're gonna do ten. Okay. So for you to see this properly, I'm gonna add a weight. So I'm gonna put a weight two in the beginning, and I'm gonna run it. One, two. Boom, see? He got damage right here. Boom. Yo. Oh! Yeah, exactly. He got damage right here. Oh, so that's why it wasn't working the other time. The other time it wasn't working because, like, it was getting it from this <laughs> from this character. Okay. Look, if I were to try to change it again and then name this guy, um, random guy, and then we, like, make this one back to seven, like how we had it originally, we should, it should damage the other character. She's really, really bad. So, look. It would be, like, one, two. Boom. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> it worked. You broke the script, bro. Uh, okay, let's try four. Maybe it is four. Maybe seven is too far. Okay, let's try again. One. One. There you go. See? He got he got damaged. I guess seven was too far. So maybe four is good. So and this should work. Like de depending like no matter the um orientation. So if I were to flip it this way and flip this guy this way and we try it. We go one, two up, oh, there you go. See, look. This is a good way to hit boxing, man. I'm telling you. Oh, this is gonna be so clutch. But yeah, that's how you do hitboxing with um uh, get parts and bounds. There's like a whole API for it. There's a whole like uh thing on the depth room that you can read about it. I'll link it down in the description if you wanna see it. But yeah. Alright.